Hello, happy Friday. Oh, it's starting to get bright. You know, I have issues when things get bright. Yeah, are you sick? Because I'm sick. I'm sick. People, let me tell you a story. I, look at me. I decided today, I decided that um, I was going to get zhuzhed up. Hello, Lois. How are you? Hello, friend. Hi, Missy. Yeah, I decided today, because I have been sick since Christmas night. Thank you, baby Jesus that this did not hit me until all of the festivities were over with. But still, it hit me. And so I thought today, I have to keep moving. Okay, I'm in a parking lot of grocery store because I got things to do. But I keep moving my phone because people think I'm taking videos of them. Listen, I've been here, people. You just walked into my line of sight. That's all I'm saying. Um, yes. Oh God, you have it too, Mache. You have it. Lord have mercy. So it hit me. And today I thought, okay, I am gonna take a shower. Actually, I took a bubble bath. Oh, I did. I thought I will just feel fancy and then I will make me feel better. No. By the time I got done. Okay. Well, now I'm sweating like a sinner in church and I'm like, oh, do I have a fever? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. I think it's just a lot of activity. And so, um, but I had stuff to mail. I'm so bad about mailing. God bless it. I always do. I always follow through. If you've ever won a prize from me, you will get it. You will get it. I'm just going to bitch about going to the store to mail it. But, oh God, I hope the cough doesn't start. I have to kick this before next week. I'm going to the um, top leader retreat, top earner thing at corporate. Um, and we have roommates and I don't want to be the coffin one. I don't want to be that girl. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. So I thought I'm not doing a live today because I feel like shizzle po nizzle. But then I thought, no, I had, I, you know, it occurred to me um, not long ago that I need to talk more. I used to talk about this all the time. About my journey, how I started, like kind of my thought process, what, you know, because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that will see, hi, I'm just like you. If I can do this, you can do this. Okay. So <clears throat> anyway, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to get through this. It's fine. We'll be sick together. Okay. At least I'm not contagious through the screen. So, um, but you know what I realized in this journey is that when you first start out, there are things that you do all the time, all the time, all the time. And then you get to the point where you're like, oh my God, I'm doing that all the time. I'm going to stop doing that for a while. And then you forget that you used to do that all the time, right? Wait, what does it say? Oh, <gasps> Becky's the first time watching. Welcome, Becky. We talk about all sorts of things up in here, but you know what? So this is, um, this is kind of my story on kind of my background and how I started with Unique. And, um, you know, this, and, and if you're not with Unique, totally fine. If you're with another company, if you have ever wanted to work for yourself and you have no plans of ever getting involved in a direct sales company, totally fine. Like this, um, I hope it is my intention that this will just show you that we all have challenges and struggles in our life and to, understand that whatever you're going through in your life right now, even if it feels like it is just the pits, it is like the worst ever, that something can come from it. Something can come from it. So, um, I, let me just tell you. And I was like, how do I keep my story short? Because I'm 49 years old. I got a lot of story to tell, but let me just sum it up for you. Okay. So I was the girl in school who, um, when I got to the age where I started liking boys, I was always the friend and the boys didn't like me like that. They liked my friends. Could it be because I was a bean pole with like no shape and figure? Possibly. Could it be because I was redhead and you redheads out there understand it is a struggle. It is a struggle. I had the palest skin in the world the, I had red hair, freckles, nobody in my entire town looked like me. Okay. I was in the minority. I was, I grew up here in an agricultural town 
in Southern California, the majority of the population is, well, was Mexican. It's about half and half now. Um, I just wanted brown skin. I wanted beautiful brown skin and long black or even dark brown hair. I used to think to myself, why can't kids, why can't we focus on everybody's eye color instead of their skin color, instead of their hair color? Because my eyes are brown. Look at my eyes are brown. Your eyes are brown. We have that in common. You know, when you're younger and you just want to be like everybody else. Oh, and did I mention that I've been five foot ten since I was 13 years old? Yes. So all of my friends came to my elbow. Legit. Can't even. I mean, I'm not lying to you. They came to my elbow. Oh, my God. I wanted to be Mexican so bad that I sometimes would come home with Mexican accent. And my mother would be like, I'm sorry, what are you doing? What, I say? Like, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I tell you this because it was a struggle. And I saw a friend of mine. So boys didn't like me. They liked me as a friend. I was their sister. I was in the permanent friend zone. And then I had a friend. She was not that attractive. I, would, I mean, I loved her, but she was not that attractive. But the boys flocked to her. Now, looking back, maybe she was a bit of a hoe. I don't know. I'm not here to judge. I'm just saying, at the time, that was not on my radar. But she had an amazing personality. She was so friendly and so outgoing. And I thought to myself, you know what? I need to be more like her. So not to say you should try not to be yourself. Or what, I mean, obviously, you know, if I didn't have it in me, I wouldn't have been able to do it. But I thought to myself, girl, you need to come out of your shell. You need to be more yourself. And here's the thing. Because I was taller, like twice the size of everybody else, because I had hair that glowed in the dark and skin that glowed in the dark, I was so different from everybody else. I was used to being teased and I was used to being made fun of and I was used to being different and I was used to sticking out, okay? That served me later in my life. That served me when I got to this company because when, and, and not even when I hit the big leagues with this company. I mean, in the very beginning, when I started my business and I know how you feel. You click that button to join and you think to yourself, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? But I knew I, my friend Tammy had bugged me to join for a couple of months. And I was like, no, 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 I will be a customer. I used to send all my friends to her to buy. I did not want to show, I did not want to sell because I knew if I joined, I had to go balls to the wall. And that's not a nasty statement. I just want you to know, cause I looked it up. It's not look it up. I went, I was either going to have to go balls to the wall or I'm not going to do it at all. Okay. Because, and I know, you know, that thought goes through your head. Okay. Look, I'll try a little bit. Like I'll give a little bit of effort, but then, and I'll see how it goes. And if I'm not successful, then I can blame it on the fact that, well, I didn't give it my all. Like if I would have given it my all, like I totes could have been professional and like done this thing. But um, I'm just going to do a little bit and see how it goes. But I'll tell you something. When I hit that button and I joined, I got the excitement and the fear all at the same time. Like, what the hell have I done? And then I decided, okay, you know what? Here's the deal. My youngest is four years old. In one year, my husband's going to start putting pressure on me to get a full-time job. What am I going to do? I have a college degree. Big whoop de frickin' do when you have little kids and you want to be there for drop-off and you want to be there for pickup, right? That doesn't matter. I'm going to have, I, I, I seriously thought I'm going to have to work at Starbucks. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I thought that that would actually be a really good job. I'll work at Starbucks. <clears throat> Here I am, freaking two degrees. I'm going to work at Starbucks. But what are you going to do? Because I want to be there for my kids. So I thought, I have to give this. I, I have to do this. Because I was used to being made fun of, because I was used to sticking out, because what ended up happening is when I was younger, I turned into the class clown because people were laughing at me anyway. And in fact, my mom and dad used to tease me when I was a kid about my red hair. I was the only one in the family with red hair. Okay, you think it's bad being at school? I wasn't from a family of redheads. I was the only one for generations. What is happening? Why me? Seriously, I used to cry, cry. Did you ever watch Brady Bunch? I used to take the lemons because Jan used the lemons on her freckles. I used to do that. 
I used to do that. My grandma had a lemon tree. Are you kidding me? I almost fried my skin off. Oh my God, help me. I thought, then I thought, oh my God, you know what? All my friends are using corn oil on their body and laying in the sun. If I do that and all of my freckles, I get so many freckles and all of my freckles connect. So it's like one giant freckle. I will look tan. I tried that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got second degree burns. Blisters. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Okay. So I decided, look, people are going to laugh anyway. My mom and dad, and I used to cry, why are you teasing me? And actually, I will still stand by this statement. That was mean. Okay, I don't agree with that. But my mom and dad said, it's because you're too sensitive. Okay, those of you who know me well, I know you're like laughing right now going, um, I'm sorry, sensitive, because now I'm like a freaking brick house. I mean, people can hurt my feelings, but then I just don't give crap. I'm just, I don't care. So, you hear that? I need an inhaler. Oh my God. So... Um, they wanted me to get tough skin. Well, I did. I did. And I decided people are laughing. I might as well laugh along with them. So here's what I did when I started my business. One of my very first posts, I think it was my, no, it was my very first post. I go, all right, get ready. I've lost my mind. Cue the eye roll. Cause Sherry's going to be selling some mascara. And I just called out the elephant in the room. I said everything that I was afraid that everyone else was saying. My heart was racing. I was sweating. I was pitting out, as they say. I was sweating. But I thought, you know what? If I call it out, they don't have a story. Because I'm the first one laughing. And it is my life. And I will do what I want to do and what is best for my family. And I am not going to not do something because it irritates somebody else or it annoys somebody else. Who are you? Who are you? You don't love me. You don't love me if um, you don't understand that I'm a mama that is trying to be able to stay home with her kids. And if you don't understand that, well, then thank you for revealing yourself to me because I do not need you in my life, okay? These are all these talks that nobody ever said. Well, maybe a couple people said, God, Jerry got a lot of posts on Facebook. And I'm all, yep, making some money. You want to do it too? You see what I'm saying? Call that out. But I will tell you. So I always felt like even in, it was about, I think it was about eighth grade. I started really understanding. I got to laugh at myself. I have to laugh at myself. So I just forced myself to, you know, I mean, nobody wants to fall down in public, right? But if I did, I just made a joke about it. And they're like, girl, you crazy. You know how many times in my life I heard that? Girl, you crazy, okay? But they are saying it with a smile on their face. Entertain the people, I say. So, hold on. <coughs> so, I felt, I felt like I really came into myself in high school even though awkward and all of that and whatever. But I was like, you know what? I felt like I really found my groove and I could feel a calling. I'm, and the, this is the truth. I felt like there were big things in store for me. All of my teachers used to say, you need to be an actress. You need to be, and I was like, oh, maybe I need to be an actress. I don't really want to be an actress, but maybe I need to be an actress. I don't know. All right. I was always open to whatever doors unfolded for me. And for whatever reason, I believed that I had to say yes to every opportunity out there because if I didn't, I could miss something. I could miss something. And it's not that whatever presented itself would have been the perfect thing, but it could have led to something else. I ended up in college. I auditioned for game shows. You know that show, Win Ben Stein's Money? Yeah. Did that. Did, um, let's see. What else? What else? Not Price is Right. I don't know. I did one of those other... It's a long time. I'm old. But my friend Trisha will remember. She remembers everything. I can't remember anything. But several little shows like that, right? Nothing ever came of it. They laughed at me. I auditioned for Fly Girls. I told you all that story. Kicked a girl in the back of the head with a fan kick. Had to run in my car because she was chasing me when it was over. But you know what happened? Guess what? I made a joke. Well, she didn't think it was funny. But I made a joke about it. Finished that dance. Stuck the landing. And um, I made Keenan Ivory weigh in. And Jim Carrey. And um, all the weigh-ins. Damon weigh in. And the sister weigh in. Rosie Perez, not so much. Because she's like a dancer. So she didn't appreciate it. But it's okay. Because she might have a little attitude anyway. I mean, I'm not judging. It's fine. So, what I'm here to tell you is. 
I thought that is going to be the key. One of these is going to open the door. Didn't open the door to anything, nothing. But guess what? Got some good stories out of it. I had a good time while I was there. Isn't that something? I mean, think about yourself when you're an old lady rocking in a chair, smacking your gums. You want to have a story to tell your grandkids, right? You want to have, you want to, you want your grandkids to be like, oh, grandma, tell us a story. Mm, I got stories for you. I will tell you some stories. But I felt this calling. I went to college. I didn't go to a four-year college because I just the thought of that burn like like just made my brain shrivel and die. I I couldn't stand the thought of it. Went to a two-year school. I'm gonna be a buyer. I'm gonna be a buyer and I'm gonna make a ton of money and I'm gonna work for Nordstrom. It's gonna be amazing. Um, no, that didn't pan out because by the time I was done with two years of school and my parents didn't have any more money for college um, because it was really expensive, I decided that's not what I wanted to do. Just in true, like, 19-year-old, 20-year-old fashion, right? That's what those kids do. So I bounced around different jobs, different jobs, finally realized I had to go back to school. Went back to school, got my degree in marketing. I worked a million jobs, never more than two years. I hated every single one of them. I hated them. What is wrong with me? What is my problem? I I, I made, I think the most I ever made was, um, I was a store manager for Eddie Bauer and I was making $32,000 a year. Another girl who had no college degree was making $34,000 a year. You think my butt wasn't in a twitch over that one? Yeah. What's the point of that? What? What? Why? Why? And I'm like, do I have no purpose on this earth? Okay, because now I'm like, 26, 27 years old, I decided to become a massage therapist to work for myself. Okay. So what I'm here to tell you is I realized that if I am working for somebody else, <clears throat> I can only make so much money because I'm paid hourly. And if your salary, what that really means is you're going to be working more than 40 hours a week and they don't want to pay you hourly. You make more money if you work hourly. If you're going to be salary and you think, oh, wow, I'm going to make all this money guaranteed. Yeah, it's because they're going to be working you more than 40 hours. They don't want to pay overtime. Mm -hmm. That's the secret. Crack that nut right there. So I thought I will work for myself and I need a job. I need a business where I don't have a lot of overhead because I can't afford $100,000 to, to uh, you know, rent a building and set up shop and be responsible for that. I had no money, no money. I had like maybe a hundred bucks in the bank and that's it. Okay. So I thought I will be a massage therapist. And here's what's funny. While I was a store manager for Eddie Bauer, a guy came in at Christmas time because we hired, I hired extra people for Christmas work, right? A guy comes in, older man, sits down. I do the interview. He's a massage therapist. And I ended up spending the entire interview asking him about massage therapy because I don't know why I was so interested in it. He happened to have a pamphlet for the school that he went to. We talked about that for the whole time. I hired him. I don't remember if it was because I thought he'd be good or I felt bad because I spent the whole time like just, you know, asking him questions. I hired him and he never showed up. Never showed up to work. That was weird to me. That looking back was guidance. I ended up taking that massage class at night. Okay. This is why I tell you, follow your curiosities. Follow things that interest you. It doesn't have to make any sense at all. When I finished massage school, I was so envious of all of these other people. They were going to work at day spas, chiropractors offices. They're talking about all this stuff, physical therapy, blah, 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 blah. And I was thinking, oh my God, I wish I could do that. And I thought, why can't I do that? I have the same certificate they do. Why couldn't I do that? So I spent my time at work with the door locked writing down how much I would need to make to be able to pay my rent and how much do I spend? What expenses could I cut down on? Um, because I was, you know, living alone in an apartment. So I had rent, I had my car payment. Like what did I have to do to make sure that I could make enough money? It just so happened we were coming up on a retail season. I mean, on a, on a holiday season and in retail, you know, it's super busy. Well, my district manager, she was the type that she liked to manage people through um, kind of threats and put downs. And she told me that my store didn't look as good as the Santa Barbara store. 
and I was I had the Thousand Oaks store. She had the Santa Barbara. My girlfriend had Santa Barbara store. My store didn't look as good as her, hers, and she was legally blind. That's a true story right there. That's totes hilarious because she, my, she was legally blind. She ended up becoming a massage therapist after I became a massage therapist because she was losing her sight. And, and eventually that was probably the only job that she would be able to have. That's a true story right there. So, see, I'm smacking my gums in my rocking chair. I'm telling some stories. So, uh, that Thanksgiving, my district manager told me that I had to make a new assistant manager come in the night before Thanksgiving to price mark. No, come in Thanksgiving night to price mark things because we were opening early on Friday. And I said, no, no, no. He's got a little kid. He's got a wife. I'm not married. I don't have children. I'll come in and do it. And she says, no, you need to learn to delegate. And if you show up, I will write you up told me, maybe this isn't the business for you. She's trying to motivate me. Well, guess what? Be arch. I took that as a sign that, you know what? I need to leave this business. So when she came back in two weeks, I told her, you know, I think about what you said and you're exactly right. And I never would have thought of it like that. I never would have been brave enough to quit if it wasn't for you. I quit. I quit people. Like, Second week of December, kiss my grits. I'm out of here. And I went into business for myself. The highs, the lows, the scariness to me, it was, I thought it's so scary to depend on myself, right? I don't have this regular income coming in. And then I realized, you know what? You know what is really scary? When you have to depend on somebody else for your paycheck. When you have to depend on someone outside of yourself, a business, an industry, or whatever outside of yourself for your paycheck, what is liberating is when you are in charge of your paycheck. There's a quote from Mel Robbins, the lady that wrote the five second rule. I'm listening to her um, audible right now, her audiobook, um, kick ass. Whoa, you have to listen. You have to listen. It's amazing. Um, she said, if your problem can be solved with action, you do not have a problem. How about that? When push comes to shove, you just get off your butt and hustle. That's it. That is something that then I realized, gosh, being self-employed actually is a lot safer. It's a lot more secure because <clears throat> all I have to battle is my lazy butt, right? So... I became a massage therapist and that's the job that I had for 11 years. <clears throat> I met all kinds of massage therapists who said to me, Sherry, how do you have so many private clients? And I will tell you exactly why. Because I showed up. That's why I tell them. I show up. I'm there every day. Every day that I have a job, I'm there. I'm never late. I'm always early. It is a priority to me. And they know that they can count on me and their time is valuable and my business is valuable and I am blessed by them and they know it and they feel it and my business is blessed because of it. Those are the same guidelines that will help you in any business. I don't, people talk a lot about MLM and direct sales and all that stuff. I don't know why it has to be categorized like that because to me, this is just a genius business plan. It is a genius model for being self-employed because I have zero overhead. Zero. I paid $99 to start a business and be self-employed and I have nobody to answer to and I can do whatever I want. Well, you know, <laughs> within reason, don't get crazy, but I'm just saying I can, ha I can, I can work. I cannot work. But the results of my business are based on me and what I'm willing to put into this. So I guess my point today is I really just want you to understand nobody has, nobody who is at the top of anything, who is succeeding at anything, has had an easy road. We've just figured it out. We just didn't quit. We just kept going, looked at everything as a lesson. And, and sometimes, you know, you're in the middle of it and you're like, I know there's a lesson here somewhere, but damn it right now, I'm just going to 
drink wine because I can't deal. Like, I don't know. But as long as you show up and as long as you're willing to learn, the sky is the limit. I have never in my life seen such an amazing business opportunity as one where you work for yourself. And just like any other business, you build a team. You know, when I worked behind the counter, I worked in retail um, cosmetics. And when our, well, it was the same at Eddie Bauer. If my district manager's stores were all prospering, she got a bonus in retail with the cosmetics. If, the, if this counter was doing a great job, the counter manager got a bonus. If her boss had five stores that were doing a great, you know, great work, she got a bonus. That's how it all works. That's how wor the world works. That's how corporate America works. And it's no different here. And I'm going to tell you something. One of the biggest things that will ever hold you back and those of you who have come to me and said, well, and even in here, you know, like I think it was last week or and from time to time when we talk about, you know, your sponsor is the person who got you into the company. And I see comments or, or people say, um, well, my sponsor's not around anymore and I'm just mad that she's making money off of my hard work. And I'm going to tell you, and I kind of jump on you when you say stuff like that. And I will tell you it is because that is the number one thing that can hold you back in your business. The number one thing that I have seen, I have witnessed it over and over and over that will hold you back in your business is if you are bitter because somebody above you is making money off of you. You need to let that spit go because who cares? Who cares? Who cares if they're sitting on their thumb like, doing nothing. So what? Has nothing to do with you. Has nothing to do with you. And the amount of anger, the amount of frustration, um, that energy that you're putting, you know, you only have so much energy in a day and the amount of energy that you're given to that is taking away and draining you from the sex success that you are capable of. You are capable of so many amazing things. If you will get out of your own way, get out of your own way. Bless her because if she's not working her business, you know, I, I got into this business and I was gung ho and I saw, oh my gosh, I can make $7 and 25 cents for every 3d mascara that I sell. Are you kidding me right now? Like I remember back in the day, I'm old enough that I remember that that was how much I made in an hour and then they took taxes out. Okay. That's insane. I'm going to go sell as much mascara as I possibly can. That is what you need to focus on. Who cares if she's making money off of you? It does not matter. What matters is that you are doing what you need to do to move your life forward, to enhance your family's financial situation, and to help other women do the same. When I realized that I could make that kind of money, and it was all up to me, the sky was the limit. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the answer to everybody's prayers. All of my friends who are struggling financially, we all were, we all are. I mean, you know, most people, like 90% of the world. I mean, not the world, the United States. So <clears throat> I thought this is the answer. And then what happened? I got people on my team and some of them wouldn't do it. And I couldn't understand why. Why aren't you doing this? It's so easy. Why aren't you doing this? I've had hard jobs. This is not a hard job. Why aren't you doing it? And then I realized there's a whole lot going on up in here that stops people. So if your sponsor is not doing the work, when she sees how she can do nothing and make some money, she trust me, she realizes if she put in a little bit of effort, she can make a whole lot more money. She's not doing it for a lot of reasons and they're all sad, okay? They're all sad. So you need to pray for her. Pray for her because she's struggling. And if you can't pray from her, for her, then just stop thinking about her. You, you need a downline. You don't need an upline. And nowadays, this wasn't always the case, but nowadays you have everything that you need online at your disposal 
at your fingertips in a hot second that's free training. And you can do this. Absolutely, 100% you can do this. If you don't wanna do videos, if you don't wanna go live, you can still do this. If you don't wanna take selfies, it'll help if you could take a selfie, but you could still do this. You can do this in any way, shape or form that you wanna do it. It is your business, you get to be the boss. And I'll tell you what'll happen. If you don't wanna take selfies and you don't wanna do videos or go live, you'll start out showing, sharing pictures of other people. And then after a while, you'll think, hmm, I could take a little one of myself. Cause you'll start seeing videos and little tutorials on how to do a great selfie. And you know what? So what if you don't do a great selfie? Take a freaking selfie. Who cares? Who cares? This whole thing right now that I'm doing, I'm sick, I'm tired. I was sweating, feeling a little feverish. And I thought, no, I'm not going to go live. And I go, why? Why? Because I thought, oh, no, I want this to be really good. You know, I'm going to prep it out. I'm going to, no, why? Done is better than perfect. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to speak from my heart. And you know what? Maybe I'll do another one later. That's maybe a little more organized. Probably won't be as fun though, right? Because why? Because we're just girlfriends sitting here having a chat. All you have to do is move, no matter what that looks like. If it's taking, if it's pictures of other people showing the, showing the mascara, showing the product that you love, if it's a live, if it's a video, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have a lot of skill. Trust me. You don't have to have a lot of skill. You just have to be open to instruction and just have the want to. You just have to have the want to. So. That's my story, and I'm sick, sticking to it. Oh, you like my lashes? Woo! Look at that. You know what I've been doing? I have been using the lash serum like a good girl because I don't always use it like a good girl. I forget, and I just go to bed. So I have been using it, and some days, if it's a day that I'm not, I know you can put mascara on top of it after it dries, um, but usually I'm getting ready so fast that I don't want to wait for it to dry. So when I've been sick, I just put it on like in the morning. And so, oh, and you like my hair. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much. If you found value here, please feel free to share. If you're watching the replay, I should have said this at the beginning, but hashtag replay. Um, when you're watching the replay. And uh, if you have anybody who you think would be great at this business, feel free to share it with them. Because... This is life changing. It really can be. And it gives so many options. And I just love how flexible it is. You can work from wherever you are. You can work a little, you can work a lot. You can have a part-time business. You can be a hobbyist. Worst case, you get an amazing discount for amazing products. So anyways, I love you guys. And I hope that those of you who are my six sisters are feeling better soon. I hope that I am feeling better soon. Um, I will be in Utah next Friday with no Wi-Fi, so I will not be here, but I will catch you the week after, okay? I love you. Have a wonderful, happy new year. Please be safe. Okay, take care.